I'm Mark McCulloch and this is a Spectacular Marketing Podcast. A podcast about brand, marketing, digital and social for the food and drink industry. Welcome to the Spectacular Marketing Podcast where we're going to cover everything brand, marketing, digital and social. We're also going to focus on food, drink, restaurant and bar marketing. Today's show is all about how to raise your sales by £5,000 a week. This is a presentation I gave at lunch in Excel in London only the other month. Hopefully you'll find it useful and find a few tips to help grow your sales in your business, whether it's food, drink or something else. Today we're here to talk about how we can raise sales by £5,000 a week. And the reason I thought it was a good topic is that it's a request that comes to us time and time and time again from our clients. Um, So we'll go through this in a staged process way to try and figure out how we can do that practically. So there's one metric to rule them all. Marketers will tell you different um, because they'll say it's brand engagement or it's awards or it's blogger influence or it's sales. That's it, end of story. Every single thing else that you do in your company, no matter which function, at the end of the day, it's got to be about driving sales and making the boat go faster. So obviously, you can't eat an elephant whole. So £5,000 seems like a big number. How do you even attack into it? How do you make it happen? Um, So some real fag packet, cigarette packet maths to get you there. So £5,000 divided by seven days, I realize it might only be five or, you know, but for the purposes of this, we'll keep it simple, divided by, it could be five pounds, 750, 15 pounds, 25 pounds, depends what you do. But in this case study, all you need is 48 extra customers or extra visits to then make this happen. So when you break it down like that, it doesn't seem too bad. And it's something you can get your staff around as well, keeping it really super simple. Each of them needs to get 10 new people in every single day or 10 extra sales. So the advice would be if you're trying to get £5,000 a week, then spend a quarter of that on the marketing efforts. I know that still seems like a lot of money, but you've got to invest to then grow. So if you want to make £20,000 a month extra, then it'd be a good idea to at least put £5,000 into the efforts. And we'll talk about that in a second. The other thing is that this is never ending. So the mistake that a lot of clients make when they come to us is they say, I need a shot in the arm, I've got enough money for two weeks, and then they think that's going to change their business forever. It really isn't. What's going to have to happen is, it's a bit like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. You need to keep ongoing with the activity, because as soon as you stop, a lot of the sales will stop as well. So a bit like being a doctor or a GP or whatever, um, we're always trying to assess what the patient needs. So what is the problem? So we go through this loop, which is the customer loop, and then look at it and say, well, actually, if we break this down even further, is it an awareness problem? Is it a consideration problem? Is it a satisfaction problem? Is it an advocacy problem? So we created the spectacular marketing rings, the local store marketing rings, and it's fairly straightforward. And if the only thing you get out of this presentation today is um, this, and you can use it in your business, then I'd be really happy. So it goes like this. So if you are launching a store or a new location, you go from one on the outside, you can see them numbered, One, two, three, four, five. If you're already open and you're trying to boost sales, then you go five to one. And then what you can see in the bottom is there's the subject line at the top, the the sort of, uh, you know, the problem, if you like, um, and then it's the distance outside. So being Scottish and being tight with money, let's start on the inside, which is the most cost-effective one. So on the inside... What are you doing to make sure someone comes back? The second one is that, is it obvious what you do? And so many people miss this in terms of how someone approaches your store. Very few approach your store front on. It's usually side on. 
So how can you make it obvious what's happening for those people and what you sell and what you should be proud of? Then it's about creating demand. So if they're not going to come to you, you need to go to them and grab those sales. Then also it's about making friends. And this is becoming more and more and more prevalent in this day and age that actually it's going full circle all the way back to good old personal selling. So it's all about one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one communications in real life, but also on social media as well. And then on the outside, making a real impact and making your presence felt in social, digital, and PR channels, which we'll talk about in a sec. So on the inside, what we talk about is three times as a habit. So if you set that as your metric to say, I want someone back three times in, a week, a day, four weeks, six weeks, whatever your metric is, then if that's the punchline, you can then write the joke to say, here's what I'm going to do to make sure that that happens. So loyalty cards are just base level nonsense. It's expected behavior and it gives you zero data and also they're open to fraud. And when was the last time you jumped for joy when you got your 10 stamp? Never. However, um, there's other ways and means to look at this. So um, when we worked with Harrison Hull in the beginning when they were starting out, we took the loyalty card a stage further, which was habit cards. We gave away a little coin that said, have a coffee on us. And then we gave the person that redeemed the coin a nice little set of cards, which then pushed people in a smart way to the day parts that they needed it. So one was bring a friend because they needed to be busier. One was take away coffee because take away coffee sales were poor at the time. And then the third one was not enough people were buying food and certainly not in the shoulder periods. So what we did was we said, you know, have a cake the next time you have a coffee. We always wanted to be coffee first. And at Pret, um, you know, working with Andrew that was on earlier, um, we worked on the coffee project, all about the random acts of kindness. So that was called the joy of Pret, because a loyalty card, as I say, is expected behavior. Someone just saying, that coffee's on the house, that lunch is on the house, forgot your wallet, no problem. How much better does that feel? And also, it's not 10% off the bottom line, you know, in terms of 10%, you know, 10th cup free. What you can actually do is throttle that, and you can just work to a budget, but it's so much more special. When I was at Yo Sushi as well, uh, we did this exclusively for O2 customers, which was free unlimited miso soup. And it was all about the fact that miso soup cost us pennies, really. Um, but to get something that then is costed up as two pounds or more just felt really good that you could keep topping up. So it's all about low cost. What is it in your business that's low cost, but has high perceived value that you're willing to show a bit of leg on and give away? Also, we talk about ABCD, which is always be collecting data. So whether that is, you know, things like, um, you know, someone's name so that they come in and they feel good and excited and all the rest of it, or if it's their actual data, then you've got them by the short and curlies and you can market the crap out of them, right? So that's good news. So try and figure out how you can get little data or big data. The other thing um, which sounds a little bit millennial in, in marketing and whatnot, but it's really important, is are you grammable? How grammable is your place, your food, your interiors, your staff, everything? So this is a good example in Hackney, of course, um, but called Palm Vaults. And it's one of the most Instagrammed um, coffee shops in London. And even when it was one store, it almost had 30,000 followers on Instagram, which is just incredible. But they spent the money in the right places. They have a color on the outside, which is known as, and actually registered as, Millennial Pink. They used Alex May Hughes, who's really the keep, calm, and carry on for the millennial generation artist to do the signage. And then they realized that cheese plants, palms, all these things are in fashion. Also, what's been great is the packaging has now been, you know, Instagrammed millions of times by people like Primark and New Look, and actually they're basing a lot of their fashion, um, sort of the next phases of what they're actually launching on this type of look. So they're absolutely on the money with that. So the second thing then is, is it obvious? And I know it's obvious to say this, 
but is it obvious? So when I was at prep, for example, you know, they're the masters at this. They ain't no fools. They really know what they're doing. But they still list out in a very humble way soups, sandwiches, baguettes, wraps, whatever, because they want to engage with people. And if you've just landed from Mars or you've came from another country or you've never heard a prep, they're still humble enough to say what they do. And also just ramming home that sort of brand promise at the top about freshly prepared good natural food has been there pretty much since day one. So also, if you've got a great message, keep stoking that fire to educate people on that. Bills are the same. Bills Cafe do a really good job. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, they were one of the first to really go out there and say that. And also they had a lovely line, which was breakfast to bedtime. So again, they're much copied now, um, but at the time this was quite innovative. Also, just with your A-boards, just say what you do. You know, so habit coffee, pointing in, just be root one about it and just let people know. Use your windows as well if there's something else going on to say, you know, coffee sandwiches vintage. And when people see that and they think that's the place for me, they'll love you for it. But you've got to give them a clue about what's going on in there. Also, if you've got the chance as well, um, you know, and you've got a demise and you've got a chance for visual merchandising and all these things, then make your experience three-dimensional and get some, you know, visual merchandising in there. So it's painfully obvious what's going on in there. And probably old grannies in the Blue Rinse Brigade probably aren't welcome and it's Hipster Central, but that's fine because there's enough of those um, that are going to go in there to have coffee in a, you know, lovely warm shipping container. Then there's the fun stuff as well. Um, so the caffeine guys are super good at this. Um, you know, again, you know, be on brand, etc. But if you go into Pinterest and you write coffee A-board, uh, pub A-board, food A-board, whatever, there's a billion of these. And you can have so much fun that will probably make someone stop in their tracks and take a photo and you'll get brand credit for that. So then in terms of creating demand... You want to go where the ped flow is. So where are the pedestrians? Where are the busy times? Where are the busy places? So things like tube stations, taxi ranks, train stations. And again, I know it seems obvious, but so many people just sit behind their four walls, open the doors and do this to try and get sales. So it's about getting out there and trying not to get in too much trouble with the local council. So a lot of sampling is a good idea as well. If you've got a product that keeps well to sample, it's a really good idea to get out there and let people try your wares and then try and get some data or get them back into the store as well to try out what it is you do. This is the salad heads um, that we invented for Chopped. So when they were ever launching a store or you know the, the sales were down, etc., we'd release the salad heads and they would go out in the local dress. This was for the city. They're unfortunately in front of Itsu for that photo, but I mean... Um, but basically there they would go and engage and have a bit of fun and propose to people and get selfies and all the rest of it. And for a really low cost to get some puppet heads done, again, it was just something on brand and fun and right for them. Uh, this little lot are called the Japarazzi. So they were my Japanese street team um, back at Yo Sushi. So we used to release them and it was a bit cheeky, but they asked people to lose their sushi virginity. So we actually realized that if we could get people over the door, then a third of people would always come back. So we gave away a free plate, um, and then if people wanted to continue to eat, they could. If they didn't want it, it was fine. They could throw it at us and go. The Metro picked it up and put it in their promotional slot on the first page um, over a six-week period, so three times, which got us lots of eyeballs. And then Nissan, Nissan got in touch and gave us... Um, three cars to give away as well in a competition where we did ads in the metro to give those away, which created even more noise. So we were super lucky. Also, don't discount direct mail. If your direct mail is good enough and strong enough, it will still get picked up and you've still got five seconds till they put it in the bin. So again, carpet bomb, local offices, um, local residential, etc. But just keep going with it. Dominoes still do it and they're no fools either. Also, if there's any opportunities as well to do something interruptive. If you think about the evolution of man and the evolution of woman, most of them are actually just staring at their phone now looking at the ground. So if the eyes are there, maybe there's something you can do in terms of the dirt that's on the path. So again, you know, some clean graffiti, things like that, you can afford to have a bit of fun there as well. Also, this seems really down and dirty and horrible, but it really works. 
So when we opened Joe Sushi um, just behind Oxford Circus, um, we bought the phone boxes outside a top shop and it cost us £60 a week. Sales started to go up by two grand, three grand, four grand, five grand, six grand a week because we had one, of, with two of those actually, outside one of the busiest places in London saying, hungry, arrow, yo sushi. That was it. So again, I know it seems down and dirty, but Wagamama use it and they're doing all right and Delivery are using it as well. So it's all about the creative. And then geofencing can work as well. So looking into a bit of tech and seeing if it's an affordable solution for you so you can interrupt people's day with a text message or a push notification through the phone network um, to actually give them an offer or a reason to come in. The other thing is about partnership. So what can you do with partners that you have as well? So the merchants, the banks, the mobile phone companies, etc. Who's got the big data and the big databases that you could maybe give an offer to that they could send it out to, uh, to their databases as well? So utilities, providers, all the things that you need in life that's really boring. Again, they know they've got a boring product. You can actually give them a bit of spice in their communications. So then it's all about making friends. And it's really about hard work. So who in your team um, or who in your agency or whatever, or do you need to hire someone to get out and knock on doors? When was the last time everyone went out to every single office in the area constantly saying to them, come on down, or giving them a surprise, or talking to them about why they should use you. It's just really hard work, but really worth it. LinkedIn is a really great way as well um, to actually get to people, buy some credits on InMail, and start hitting people up. So it's just about being smart there. Also, um, this was something that was on Instagram the other day, and uh, it was Poco Gelato who did a great job and they've been sending out ice cream packs to all of their local um, residencies. So just a little handwritten note, um, looks a bit kiddified, which is even cuter. So to Nick, are you starting to feel the love yet from us lot? Um, and then, you know, the batches of ice cream that they were giving out. So not bad. Abocado did something really interesting as well, where they looked around the local area and they gave a green card, which gives you 50% off for a year. I think it's quite deep discounting, and also they're giving it away on drinks and things like that, which maybe doesn't make margin sense. But actually, by dropping those into our office, they're now on our roster of places that we'll go for lunch, rather than just you know going to Pret every day or whatnot. So from that perspective, you know they've actually gained customers at a cost, but we are visiting the volume games up really high. I was in a meeting with a client the other week, and uh, just wrapping up the meeting, and I was saying where are you going now? And she says, oh, I'm going to see a, a mums and dads group up in Crouch End where they just opened a restaurant. And I just thought that's exactly what you should be doing. So not armchair marketing, not posters and ads and all these lazy things. Again, just going one by one by one by one and going in and showing a bit of love to these groups and trying to help them in terms of what they want to do. Then there's a value exchange, which means that then they'll start, they'll start shopping with you. Also going around local shop staff as well, they need to eat too. So going around the local shopping centres, the pubs, the whatnot, just trying to get them in as well to dine with you in some way, shape or form. And actually it would help your uh, shoulder periods too. Also if you open up your space to co-working and co-workers, you know, if you're actually seeing that your establishments are empty, is there another use for it? You know, one of the pub brands we worked for uh, was empty in the mornings and we hooked up with a mum's group and dad's group and we actually um, let them use it as a pram park. So they had all the prams in the pub, the staff were sorting the place out, they opened at 11, the class finished at 11, guess what happened? Everyone came in, a little drink, a little coffee, led into lunch, led into an easy afternoon. So again, it's just spotting those opportunities. So the last thing's digital, and I'll try and be reasonably quick, I know I've got five minutes left. So um, on average, we look at our phone, 220 minutes per day. So that's more than anything. Even if you were married to a supermodel, your kids are the cutest thing, you know, you're looking at your phone way more, right? Um, and it's basically this. So if all of the attention is there, it seems ludicrous that we put a lot of effort outside of the phone. So what can we do about that? Facebook ads and Instagram ads is the number one place I'd be putting all of your energy. So the amount of targeting that you can do in the Facebook ads back end is insane. So you can actually look at 
allergies of food, you can look at interests, you can target all competitors. If you're a healthy lunch brand, you can target all gyms in the area and you can market one kilometer out. Drop the pin and you can market to everyone that's walked past, lived there or is, is, is there right now and it will come up in the news feed. So again, start thinking and looking at that. There's a billion great videos on YouTube about how to do that. So start figuring that out and you'll really do well. And also if you're into you know, events and event space and all the rest of it, you can target close friends of people who are 39 and about to be 40. People that are just engaged, you could spend all day and they are sitting ducks. So again, I'd get stuck into that. However, the creative really matters. You can't just do one ad, post it out and do that. You've really got to put the work in to make sure it's relevant every time. And then the big thing really is about the buzz phrase at the moment, thumb stopping content. So what to do is, when next time you're flicking through your phone, figure out what you're stopping at and why. So, you know, whether it is sexy people or whether it is great food porn or whether it's a video or whether it, whatever it is, and then try and reverse engineer that into what you could do with your brand to make you stop in your tracks as well. Also, um, obviously, Instagram stories is happening and we've just found out really in real time that every marketer is a crap storyteller, right? So what you should be doing is looking at who are your friends, family, colleagues, whatever, that actually tell stories for a living. So the issue with the Instagram stories is everyone's just putting up their flyer with some text and scribbles and unicorns on it. That's not a story. So a story's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. So start thinking in that way as well. How can you make it compelling that people will go right the way through the journey when you can then right hook them into a sale and coming in to your store? Facebook Live's super interesting as well. The good news is hardly any brands are really using it. So it's a bit annoying at the moment, but if you flip up your phone, you light it up, start taking footage of something interesting, the standout you'll get is quite incredible. So again, start thinking about that. You're a walking BBC ITV Channel 4. But again, it's why are you interrupting my day and why do you want me to watch this? But um, for launches and things like that, new products, it could be really good. Also, in terms of social media, make sure you reply to everything all the time. And don't just hit the heart and don't just say thanks. You know, personalized, using names, go back to every single person. It's hard work but it really will pay off and you'll get brand credit for that. These are the types of uh, new media uh, publications that you want to be focusing on. So you want to be getting your message into and your story and your products, etc., into BuzzFeed, Munchies, Vice, Mr. Hyde, these kind of things. Because actually that's where all the old media, the Sun, the Daily Mail, the Times, the Telegraph, the whatnot, that's where they're getting their stories from. So if you get hit in there, chances are you'll get hit in the traditional media too. So definitely worth looking at that and really look at Vice News and Vice's content. Um, it's really worth looking at. They've got a food program, excuse my French, called That's Delicious. Um, very much worth looking at about the new wave of food programs and how they're working. Couple other things. Look at your uh, digital ecosystem. You know, it's not just social. So are your blogs up to date? Do you appear when you say bakeries in London, bakeries in Hammersmith, co coffee in Oxford Street? If you're not appearing in the Google map, map searches, try and sort that out because that's the way people are searching. And then on TripAdvisor, for example, um, you know, the question comes in a lot. How can we be good at TripAdvisor and how can we get those nasty complaints going further down the page? Just be good. Sort of quite simple. And um, there's no room for manoeuvre. Be good, rule two, zero one. You've just got to keep being good. Thanks for listening to the Spectacular Marketing Podcast. More will be coming in the next week or so. Keep your eyes peeled on iTunes and Acast, Spotify, and all other good podcast providers. Please do get in touch, mark at wearespectacular.com or DM me on Instagram and Twitter at Spectacular Mark. I look forward to welcoming you soon to another spectacular marketing podcast.